Quilting is a term that we use to broadly describe the process of creating a quilt project. If I were to get really technical about it, quilting is specifically the process of stitching together the layers, the quilt top, the batting, and the backing. When you're at this point of the quilting journey, it's time to make some decisions. Should you tie the layers together? Should you stitch them? Should you stipple? In this episode of Fearless Quilting Finishes, I'd like to share with you my favorite stress-free ways of quilting. Fearless Quilting Finishes, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. The quilting process, as I mentioned, putting the top, the batting, and the backing together, starts with planning for the backing fabric. Backing fabric isn't always that interesting. It's usually just one solid piece of fabric, but rarely on a big quilt will one with the fabric accommodate the whole size of the bed quilt. So I'd like to give you some hints about how we go about piecing the backing fabric. Now we have some contrasting fabric samples here in a much smaller size, but I think you'll get the concept. These are only fat quarters to represent 40 inch wide fabric or 42 inch wide fabric. Often bed quilts are wider than 80 inches, and which would be two widths of fabric. And rather than just having a seam going down the middle, the common recommendation is to cut one of your lengths in half and flank either side of the middle section so that there's seamings going down the side. So if you need to take widths off either side, you can do that. So, this would accommodate up to, let's say, an 82, 80 inch wide quilt, but many quilts are just a little bit wider than that, maybe 84 to 86. So rather than buying another length of fabric just to accommodate those couple of inches, many times what I like to do is to add a block, a, a column of blocks down the center of the backing. Here's a picture of a column quilt that I made a while ago, and it was a brightly colored quilt and on the back you can see the image of the extra fabric was put down the center of it. And here's an example of that where you would have two, if these were 40 inches and 40 inches, I realize they're not but it would kind of consume my whole table, you could add a block of extra fabric down the center just to make it fun, carry through some of the designs from the front and then you have a wider width. So you can be creative when working with the backing fabric so you don't spend a lot of money on buying three lengths of fabric instead of just two for those larger size quilts. The batting, you'll buy batting that accommodates your type of quilt. And we make lots of quilts in the Sewing with Nancy team and sometimes we have extra quilt batting left over. Now this is again smaller pieces to show you what we do to piece the batting. Sometimes they're roughly cut, they're not even. We stack the batting fabrics together and then do a cut. Now this may seem a little unusual right now, but just wait. It will kind of be magically transformed. We're going to put these two together. We're going to seam them together with tape. And then we peel off the extra from one piece, peel off the extra for the second piece, and presto, we have kind of kissed seams. Then to seam them together, we use an interfacing. It's a, a tape that's designed for quilting. It's a lightweight, fusible trico. And let me just cut this extra length off. 
and it doesn't add weight. It just seams it together. White on white, I realize, is a little tough to, to see. And I wouldn't normally press on my cutting board, but you get the idea. You just can seam it together to get nice wide width. So if you have a baby quilt, let's say, perhaps you can use up some of your scraps when you're creating the batting. So now it's time to do some layering. You have your batting chosen. Now I could do a pr whole program on batting. It would be very boring, a lot of white on white to tell you what types of different batting to use. Use your favorites or you may want to reference a, a book or so that tells about different types of batting. But we'll take the backing fabric wrong side up and it will not be in such high contrast as we have here, but that shows you how the piecing goes together. You, on your, I use a ping pong table, and I tape down my backing, and then place the batting and the top quilt, and roll the two together. Usually, this is a small piece, usually I work with the batting first, and it does take a little bit of time to get that batting smoothed down so that it's even. Now you pin it together, pin all these layers together, and you're going to have a bigger piece than this. This might be a great time to get a quilting buddy to come over and, and help you do this. We're going to pin the layers together, and I'm going to find my tool. Here we go. And curved pins or lightweight pins, and then you can just pin these together, starting in the center. And here we go, we'll get the clip going there. And I, as I've done in the past, usually a, a wrist or a fist apart, do the pinning now. Try not to get too much fabric. I'm working kind of backwards here so that you get a dimple so it lies flat and avoid, if you can, some of the seams because you may be doing some stitching next to the seams itself. So it's coming up and we're using this little tool to help close this together. So just make a fist and pin. And, be, and I work on a ping pong table at home, as I mentioned, or uh, because then you can glide the pins along the table and you're not going to worry about scratching the ping pong table. So you just pin the whole layers, all the layers working out from the center. When you have a big quilt, you're going to have to just smooth and make sure everything's even. I'm going to show you another way that I like to use, but before I do this, I'm just going to share with you what I would do next in using this sample. Have your friend help you, and you roll the fabric to the center. And then, borrowed from the bicycle world, these are for quilts, and you'd have a bigger quilt. You can see we have a small one, but these bicycle-type clips fit around the fabric, and this is just a small small little quilt, so we wouldn't use these, but you have a big quilt, it would fit that in there. You now you use these for placing around your ankle so your pants don't get into the bike. Spokes, or you can just pin the layers together. And then on this side, do the reverse. After you've pinned it all, which I haven't done, roll to the middle so that you can start your quilting process in the middle. So this is one option, pinning the layers. Another one is fusing the layers, and we learned this from uh, sewing with Nancy Guest in the past, Rochelle Stibb taught us this technique and we've adapted it many times. And that is to use fusible web. We have this small quilt laid out and you kind of peel back the, the backing fabric and your sewing room ever get like this, can't find your, here we go. Here's my fusible web, paperback fusible web. And instead of using pins, both on the top layer, on the wrong side of the top layer and the bottom layer, let me just get this cleaned here. This is a, had some webbing exposed about every four inches or so, wherever you would place the safety pin, you'd place a little web. This goes fast. Whoop, maybe too fast right there. And then you take off the Top layer probably is the most difficult thing to, of this to do. And then, and I'm going to, I think you kind of get the idea of this. One more. <laughs> it's not accommodating me too much today. You peel this back, then place your batting fabric and 
lightly press. And make sure you have some towels underneath it. Then you'd place the same type of thing. And this was pretty hot, so I really don't need to hold it that long. You'd place a little tack, just tack it down. And then you'll be able to go all the way around your quilt and fuse baste it together. That way you don't have to worry about avoiding the pins. So when you have your layers together, whether you pin them or you fuse them together, obviously press after you remove the paper, you're ready then to try some unique quilting options. When layering all your fabrics together and then doing the stitching, you have many options. I'm going to share with you what I call my fearless ways, the techniques that are the simplest. First of all, stitching in the ditch. We do this with garment sewing or with quilting. It means to sew from the right side of the fabric, to stitch in the well of the seam, in the groove of the seam, so that the stitches do not show on the right side. It just attaches all layers together. And you can see exactly what the front looks like because of the stitching in the ditch that's holding it together. Straight stitch. I think you can see how that's done. You'd set your machine for that stitch using quilting thread or an all-purpose thread plus a quilting needle and then a lightweight fabric and, excuse me, lightweight thread in the bobbin that matches your backing fabric. To help you work with the stitching in the ditch, choose a foot that has a groove down, right down the center. When stitching, you'll see that groove right there. You can sew right along that edge and kind of guide as you're stitching, and it works out very well. But yet, there isn't a lot of room for give here because you, if you stitch a little bit over the edge or under, you'll see the thread, and it's okay if that happens. I don't have any problem with that. But if you'd like to try another option, and that would be to work with a decorative stitch. You know, quilting isn't all that exacting. Yes, you want to get everything matching, but if it's a little bit off, it's part of the charm. That's the way I look at it. And here we have decorative stitches, not really stitching in the ditch, but sewing along the seam so that it gives some special effects as well. And when we get to our third program, it'll also be a way of finishing the binding to do that same stitching. So enough talking, let me show you how it works. On my screen, you can see the stitch I've chosen. It could be a zigzag stitch or any type of, this is a multiple step zigzag with a little extra pattern in it, and it will straddle that seam. If you have a knee lever, which you can't see, but I'm able to lift the presser foot up and down when quilting, it works out extremely well. It just helps you so much. And when doing this stitches, that way you're starting, I'm starting from the center, and when I'm stitching out with this stitch, I can just guide the foot following the seam and then the stitch straddles on both sides. So it, it isn't, you don't have to worry so much about guiding as you're sewing. You can see in my pinning that I pin away from the seam allowance. So I can just kind of keep on sewing and not having to stop to unpin the fabric. And as I bring this up, you can see I didn't stitch perfectly, but it works. It works by holding all the layers together. Another option is to use a decorative stitch, a single decorative stitch, to tack or to tie the layers together. Set your machine at your favorite stitch that gives you just one little design and periodically put that through your design. Great for small quilts. And I'm going to change my stitch to a decorative stitch. And I'm going to choose, oh, let's choose this flower design. And then if you're able to, just choose a single stitch so that you can just do one at a time. And as I'm stitching, again, starting in the center, and I'm using my knee lift lever, I would just decide where I'm going to sew these. Let's see, I'm going to go right about here and stitch one complete design. Just let it stitch and it will stop after stitching it. And then cut the threads. Raise the presser foot, advance it to another section and do another stitching to hold all layers together. Again, you'd like to put a single stitch about a fist width away as we talked about earlier so that it will hold all the layers together. 
quilts many years ago were tied with yarn or heavier thread, this is kind of the same concept by just having a single little stitch that you can later trim off the extra threads to hold the layers together and it's a great way of tying a fearless way. Whenever I present seminars and I ask how many people have stippled their quilts, worked with free motion quilting, a very shy 10% of the audience raises their hands. Many people have heard about it, they'd like to try it, but fear has been built into their minds that it's difficult to do. Don't make it difficult, make it simple. And you, all you have to do is maybe make larger stippling designs in the beginning to become comfortable with it. This shows using variegated thread, puzzle piece ends or light bulbs or whatever you'd like to call them, or even just following a design and echo stitching a certain distance apart. And start with a smaller project. It could be a lap quilt, a wall hanging, make it easy. First we're gonna talk about the setup and there are many products on the market for stippling to make it easier to help slide the fabric and that's what I have placed on the bed of my machine but for sure you need a quilting foot that will rise above the fabric and you can see through this one so it makes it easier to work with. You need to lower the feed dogs. Now on each machine it will be a little different. I just have an icon on my machine that makes it very simple. It's the icon of the presser foot and a free motion stitch. You can see right there, so I'll just depress it so that the feed dogs have been dropped. Then you're going to use a variegated thread if you'd like, or you can use a thread that matches your fabric and then work with, in this instance, because I'm working with heavier thread, I'm working with a top stitch needle. But test the needle with the thread to make sure you have the right combination. The machine is set for a straight stitch. You do not need to control the length because the feed dogs are dropped. So you're going to be driving the car. It's kind of like ice skating. That's the way I liken it to. My sample quilt has been fused based together so we use that little technique I showed you earlier today and you're going to guide your hands on either side of the fabric not keeping it near the needle just on either side and you're going to guide it. You may want to try this at first just guiding it as if you're doing a figure eight or a little stitch. Now the reason that many people are afraid to test this out is because they've heard that you're never supposed to have stitches cross there, there aren't any stippling please, so you can certainly do this. You can cross stitches, you can make swirlies, I really don't care. You can have fun with this. That's what sewing and quilting is all about. And you sew at a very fast speed and you move the hoop. Now you can see I have something to, to work with my, kind of act as a steering wheel. And you just gently move the fabric so that you get, get even stitches. Now this is certainly high contrast thread with this project and you would meld the thread so that it would blend right in with the fabric from behind. So big puzzle piece ends are a way to start this process. If you want to make smaller puzzle pieces, go right ahead. If you want to cross your stitches, be my guest. Unless you want to win first place in a major quilt competition, you can certainly do that. And you can see in a very short period of time, I have covered quite a bit of territory in my quilt. Now, you could also, if, you, if I had an applique here, let's say of a leaf, I could just follow that leaf and then I could echo stitch. Just do a certain degree and I'm gonna stop and move my hoop, my little steering wheel so that I can just guide along this area. It's kind of like doodling, like you had a pencil in school and all the teacher's talking, you're just making designs. So that's kind of what's happening here. Press that pedal down so that you can get that smooth flow. And I'm just gonna do a little bit more just to encourage you to try this at home. And, I have, and if you have sharp corners, oh, it's not going to matter. No one is going to be upset by that. But again, you can cover lots of area. I'll just show you my very rough stitching. It's a lot easier to do this when you're not talking. But you can see a fearless way of working with stippling. Give it a try.
Most of us think of clothing designers as fashion forward thinking individuals. Today, you're going to meet clothing designers who thought of safety before runway style. Please welcome Annie, Natalie, and Maggie, who are from a team from the University of Wisconsin Stout who designed an evacuation harness for wheelchair bound people. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's, it's a treat to have you here because you're going, you're attending your seniors from my alma mater mm -hmm. and I received a press release about this class that you were in and the great design that you cre created. Annie, tell me a little bit about this class. Yeah, um, I'd like to think of it more of a, like a problem solving type of skill. You're thinking outside of the box, doing uh -huh. more research on things and getting a better understanding of um, I guess like finding something that needs improvement and like improving lives on it. In the so. apparel design and then Natalie you tell us about the evacuation harness. We created a device that could really help someone evacuate from a building where they have to go downstairs and things like that. We did a lot of research on 9-11 so that really led our D design development in that direction. So I know you'll you design clothes as well, but this is a unique thing. And Maggie, you this design when completed, there were five on your team. Mm -hmm. And tell me about and tell our viewers also about the area where this was submitted because you, you won an award. Yes, um, we submitted it to the IFAI um, for our competition. It was nationally recognized. And we won second place. And it's a safety. It's, yep. it's for safety design. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the pitfalls, Annie, that you had when working with Five and sewing and designing that you, when working with this project? Communication. <laughs> I mean, that's the most important part. And so sure. if you don't have that right, then it makes it really difficult, whether it's planning on when you're going to meet sure. or when you're going to have everyone on the same page. So, uh -huh. But I think we did a really good job, especially with the advances in technology and getting aware of everything. So. Sure. And Natalie, what type of fabrics are in this harness? Um, we use a lot of the narrow fabrics, so like um, straps that you find in like backpacks and stuff like that. We oh, try sure. to mm -hmm. mainly create it out of that. How many, Maggie, did you make? I mean, it must have been interesting <laughs> working together on this. Yeah, I'm trying to think. We made at least five prototypes, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. and they started from muslin, and then we eventually got <laughs> to like a hard. backpack, and mm -hmm. yeah. So did you do this, I mean, industrial sewing machine? Did you use that, or just a regular sewing machine? We used a home sewing machine, yeah. mm -hmm. which was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to go through all those layers? Yes. I was lucky I didn't have to do the sewing. Oh, so. You did, you just did, so who did the sewing? We we worked on some of yeah, them. We, we kind of split up our whole project out of parts. So. so you've tested this out and on people who are bound bound to a wheelchair or and and it works well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what have you learned most from this design process? Um, it was a really big team learning experience. Absolutely. Because we worked so much together. It was a lot of time uh -huh. together. A whole semester we were in one group. So I think that was the biggest thing to take away. You know, sometimes sewing projects, quilting projects take a semester length yeah. of time, maybe longer. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, we don't have such, such great uh, results at, at, in that short a time. So when, when you're thinking about your, your fashion forward, which you are, it, you're going to graduate soon. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tough question. It, you do a lot of exploring in school and then um, for your last semester uh -huh. you kind of like choose what direction you want to take it. So I mean right now I have a pretty diverse portfolio but we'll uh -huh. see. We'll see where the next semester takes me. So. so Maggie do you think working on this project will help you secure a job? Oh definitely. I think the teamwork that is involved um, was incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. And no, Natalie, no, it's kind of like what we do. It's a teamwork job doing yeah. sewing with Nancy. <laughs> it's a teamwork job. Sometimes people work together on quilts or other projects. So this is just a, a new area. Well, gals, thank you for being with us today and doing so well on your award that you received mm -hmm. for your evacuation harness. Well designed. I, I hope this gets manufactured soon. <laughs> oh, thank you so thank much. You. You're very welcome.
If you'd like to read more about the design that these gals made, you can go to nancyzeman.com where all things Sewing with Nancy are found under Nancy's Corner. You can click and find out more information. You can also re-watch 52 of the most current Sewing with Nancy programs and connect to us by social media. I hope you've enjoyed the second program of our three-part series on fearless quilting finishes. We'll be back next time with our final program, Working with the Bindings. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled Fearless Quilting Finishes that includes all the information from this three-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2703. Order item number BK2703, Fearless Quilting Finishes, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.